The idea for this video came about through two ways. For one, growing up my dad used to drink St. Ives, which is a big reason why I don't drink right now. And the other is that throughout doing research for the many videos that I've done, I ran across the old St. Ives rap commercials. I fell in love with the commercials, especially the raps in them. My favorite one is probably the Snoop Dogg LBC one with Nate Dogg or the Wu-Tang one. I really wanted to dial it back and go behind the story of how exactly did a malt liquor company change rap history. But before I get more into the video, I would first like to thank you guys for coming to see this because you guys can be doing a million other things right now, but instead you're here with me and I appreciate that. If you guys like the content, you guys should like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. Also, follow my Instagram too. That would be greatly appreciated. You guys can always reach out and just show me some love, man. It's all good. Also, let me know where you're tuning in from, represent where you're from. Let me know some of your favorite St. Ives commercials from back in the day in the comments. But without further ado, I give you how a malt liquor company changed rap history. Throughout rap history, it's really crazy seeing the insane endorsement deals and sponsorships that rappers have been a part of. I mean, to name a few, we got Travis Scott being with McDonald's, that was crazy when that happened. Jay-Z being with Reebok back in the day, around 2003, I believe. But, you know, 50 Cent wasn't that far behind him with his own Reebok deal. Drake and all of the other rappers that have been with Sprite. And I still remember that old Drake commercial when his, like, body came apart and then it came back together. Seeing that as a kid, I thought that was, like, the dopest thing ever. And lastly, how can I forget to mention Run DMC being with Adidas. Legendary stuff, right? Right there now granted run dmc's deal with adidas was one of the first of its kind especially in the rap space and was and still is a huge deal they really paved the way for rappers to be getting the deals that they've gotten throughout the years especially when people started to see the power of hip-hop marketing but this video isn't about adidas and instead is about a malt liquor company by the name of saint ides here's what a writer for the los angeles times 
had to say about malt liquor in 1992. Malt liquor, which is made similarly to beer but has more than 5% alcohol, has become the drink of choice among many in the inner city. It is heavily discounted in black and Latino neighborhoods nationwide. A 40 ounce bottle can cost less than $1.50 and promotions coyly and sometimes not so coyly plug its potency. By this point in time, beer consumption had been declining while sales of Colt 45, Old English 800, King Cobra, and other high octane malt liquor brands grew 15% in 1991. Now back in these days, when people were advertising malt liquor, especially to a black audience, as far as notable celebrities, they had people like Billy D. Williams with the slogan, works every time, and Red Fox with him and Billy D. Williams both advertising for Colt 45. When it comes to St. I they were a brand that was founded and launched in 1987. By this point in time, in 1987 is what some people consider to be the start of the golden age of rap or hip hop, which would bleed into the 90s. But also around this time, Run DMC had their deal with Adidas and Curtis Blow had his deal with Sprite. Now Sprite's connection with rap could be an entirely different video in which like, I would be interested in making if I definitely see the support of this video and people requesting me to do that Sprite video, so yeah. But St. Eyes originally had a campaign which featured Motown Legends, the four tops, which really like didn't gain like the brand any traction at all. This would cause St. Eyes to ultimately turn to a West Coast producer by the name of DJ Pooh to help with their radio and TV spots. Now, DJ Pooh is a dude who I feel like really doesn't get the credit that he deserves, especially for the things that he's done. He has has been an integral part in the Friday movie franchise. He's credited as a co-producer and writer of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, and the man does and has done music production. Shout out to DJ Pooh man, but by 1987, DJ Pooh production wise already had credits with people like LL Cool J and with King T. DJ Pooh was given a huge amount of creative freedom by St. Ives, even by the standards of today. Musically, it was a landmark. I really believe it was the first time a brand turned over the creative keys to an artist to make commercials for them as they saw fit. This was said by the author of the 2010 book, The Big Payback, The History of the Business of Hip Hop. DJ Pooh basically gathered the infinity gauntlet of rappers from this era for the St. Ives commercial. He had people like Eric B and Rakim, Ice Cube, Cypress Hill, the Wu-Tang Clan, Scarface, Snoop Dogg, and the Dog Pound, Biggie Smalls, Tupac, King T, etc. And that's only naming a few. The thing about these ads is that they were extremely catchy and the music from the ads really felt like they should have been real songs. St. Ives ads emerged at the same moment that hip hop promo videos went mainstream on music television channels and the two worked synergetically to cross promote each other. The ads and rap music videos often shared the same settings and styles. The ads often made by underground hip hop producers with the purposely low budget and verite style felt credible to many hip hop fans. They had credibility for the core hip hop audience and from there, they seemed cool to the exploding suburban fan base for hip hop. This was said by the author of the book, Nothing But A G Thing, The Culture and Commerce of Gangsta Rap. Like I said earlier, one of my favorite ads is the Wu-Tang Shaolin Brew one and I love the beat to that one. Plus you had Ray, Ghost, and Meth all flowing like all over it. It was just dope. And I'm talking about like the TV version because obviously there's a version that has other people on it in the Wu-Tang. But whenever I do a Wu-Tang video, I always put in that beat and people always ask me where it's from or if they do know, they get reminded about the commercial. A fun fact is that the Shaolin Brew commercial plays in the background at the start of Raekwon's song, Spot Rushers, which appears on his classic debut album, Only Built for Cuban Links. The Snoop Dogg and Nate Dogg St. Eyes in the LBC commercial is another crazy one. Nate Dogg's part is just so memorable and there's a reason 
reason why people consider him the king of hooks the man is so amazing snoop also slides on that and there's like a longer version of that song that's like a minute which you can find online another one that i really like is the ice cube jacket for bruise one that i played in the beginning dj Pooh makes an appearance in that one and the beat on that commercial is bananas and ice cube Yo, Ice Cube is going, yo, Ice Cube going crazy. But things wouldn't be all sunshine and rainbows for St. Ives because they got into trouble in 1991. What happened was that one of the St. Ives ads contained a vocal sample of Public Enemy's Chuck D from the song Bring the Noise without his permission. Now, if you're watching this, I'm already assuming that you probably know who Public Enemy is, especially since they're known for their political messages. But Public Enemy has a song entitled one million bottle bags which appeared on their 1991 album apocalypse 91 the enemy strikes black chuck d had this to say about the song one million bottle bags one million bottle bags is about the malt liquor problem in black america malt liquor has twice as much alcohol content and twice as many residues that's to say waste products from regular beer it's effed up beer with more alcohol instead of making people laid back it makes them hostile and it leads to a lot of black on black violence in america they have massive campaigns for this stuff that are targeted at the black community malt liquors are made by the major brewers in this country when they put their regular beers through the filters all that excess bs they push to the black community and it's been killing mfers for the longest period now chuck d claimed copyright infringement and violation of his public rights while also filing a five million dollar lawsuit his attorney said that he has taken a very strong position against malt liquor and these st ives ads made him look like a hypocrite now the chief executive of mckenzie river at the time which is the company that founded st ives said that they were unaware of chuck d's voice being in the ad during this time ice cube was the anchor spokesperson of the st ives ads and the company claimed that it didn't target black people in particular they would also say the ice cubes appeal is broad scale and there's a similarly broad market for malt liquor however though back in these days purchases from blacks made up 75 percent of all malt liquor this lawsuit however though was settled out of court and mckenzie river was hit with another lawsuit yet again that year mckenzie river was sued by the new york state attorney general's office for ads allegedly targeting underage minority children. The company was settled out of court for this as well, and it was also fined by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, which actually shut down the company's operation for three days. McKenzie River denied it was purposely targeting minors with their product and agreed to produce ads warning against underage drinking and drunk driving, as well as public service announcements promoting safe sex. But with all of this, the company still could continued to make ads way beyond 1991. Some of the other notable ads that I have yet to mention is Scarface's. Here is a clip of his. So I reach for the real deal. Oh, if you love the beers, try the ones before when I've been rolling it for years. So I get to my crib and I pause my ride. Cause if you got to creep, then avoid the eyes. Cause only silly people try to drink and drive. They risk their lives and some do die, but I... I see why a lot of people really like Scarface's ad a lot, but another ad that I personally really like is Warren G's. Here's his ad. While I was looking at the people who did ads for St. Ives, there was one person who really jumped out at me, which was Jay-Z. Yes, Jay-Z did an ad for St. Ives back in the day. Now, I know that Beanie Siegel did a freestyle over this beat, which is also like good, might I add, but Jay-Z also did a dope ad, and here it is. Me and the shorty on the slide off, pop the top off, the same eye, she type ladylike, I hit her with ice, sit this in your glass as she sat with class, legs crossed in my living room, radio on blast, she said you know for popping styles with the best of us, I told her it was no particular flow, I'm ambidextrous. 
but one ad that I really wanted to talk about is the one that Biggie did which led to controversy. Now the beat that was used in Biggie's ad was made by DJ Pooh. Here's what Daz Dillinger had to say about it. That beat originally DJ Pooh made it for Biggie Smalls for a St. Ives commercial. He made the beat and really I picked the beat and I was like, man, I love that beat. I want that. Then he did a St. Ives commercial with Biggie Smalls and I heard it on the radio. I was like, damn cuz, that's my beat. Damn, hold on, that's my beat. I called DJ Pooh and was like, man, Pooh, that's my beat. Man, Biggie is on my beat. He was like, I got you. Man, I was like, I want to go to the studio tomorrow. I want to knock this mf -er out. DJ Pooh would then tell Corrupt that it was only a commercial and the Dog Pound didn't care because they felt like it was their beat. Now the song ended up being named New York, New York, which consisted of Corrupt featuring Snoop Dogg. Now the members of the Dog Pound are adamant that this song wasn't a diss song and instead was made in dedication to New York. People took this song the wrong way and this was in the middle of the East Coast West Coast beef and it led to violence. Now that's a completely other story with like the set being shot up and then you know them like ended up knocking down the buildings and stuff like that. So yeah like we're not going to get into all that like in this video. But like another St. Ice commercial that was really popular was the Tupac and Snoop one. I'm pretty sure St. Ives had like a passion flavor back in the days, but some of you might be wondering how you can listen to all of these St. Ives ads, and a lot of them are on YouTube, and some are very rare. Some might be in good quality, while others aren't. I know that there's a St. Ives 94 tape, and there's like compilations and collections of ads also on YouTube. It's funny because I'm in no way endorsing alcohol in this video. I personally don't drink like at all. Just isn't my thing nor has ever been. I really wanted to speak on these St. Ives ads and how they really did play a hand in rap becoming more corporate. Despite some fun like these ads were controversial, everybody has to start somewhere. And for some people, it was a malt liquor company. Not all the rappers at this time could get endorsement deals from big brands. It ended up being DJ Pooh and the malt liquor company that really gave these people a lot of exposure on TV and or through the radio. Look at all the names of people who did these St. Ives commercials and ads not only on TV but also on radio. A good amount of people weren't going to get endorsed by a company like Sprite because look at all the people who got endorsed by Sprite for instance back in the day and look at their image. Now I'm not going to say any names but nowadays I've been seeing people with little to no actual clout appearing with big brands and be endorsed and I just like be in confusion about how that even came about like I I really be like baffled about some of these brands and how small some of these artists are and them representing the brands but back to St. Ives and it actually still exists but under a different company like I said earlier I remember being a kid in the 2000s and seeing my dad drinking those big glass bottles malt liquor isn't as popular as it used to be which led to the decline of the brand and after a while you didn't really see rappers endorse it like they used to the rappers moved over to other things like promoting champagne and also vodka instead of malt liquor Liquor. One thing that I will say is that the brand does leave behind some of the most dope sounding commercials that also bring nostalgia to some people, some of the best ads to come from rappers that I've ever heard. All in all, let me know what you thought of the video in the comment section below. I love you guys with all my heart. Peace.